another episode of the Higher Level Podcast. Uh, so tonight it's myself and James Dillon on the show. Obviously a lot to chat about. It's been, uh, you've been travelling the world and it's been a while for you. You've been on it feels like. I have missed the last couple I think with, with commitments. Aye, my big commitments obviously straight off the bat. Singapore, uh, out there with Stevie Ray to fight Michael Johnston. What, was that your first time in Singapore? It was when I... Um, I almost went to Evolve at one point uh, to, to train for a bit, but the, it kind of fell through and some stuff came up. But it's the first time I've been there. I, I think I've been in the airport before I got connecting flight there when I went to to New Zealand once, but uh, it was the first time there. It was beautiful there. Aye, I was going to say that. I saw some of your videos coming up. The city looked nice, so yeah, lovely city. Aye, it was one of the nicer places I've been to. Uh, it was expensive, uh, um, but... It was nice, man. It was really nice. What, what was the atmosphere like in the actual show itself? Because you always talk about how different it is, the atmospheres out like Singapore, eh, places like that, compared to America, Europe. Um, it was decent. It wasn't quite... It wasn't as boisterous as some of the European crowds. Um, and they're, they're probably more knowledgeable than a lot of the American crowds. Eh? Um, mm -hmm. But it, it wasn't like a patch on the on the Glasgow crowd or the Dublin crowd. Um in terms of the noise and stuff, but it was quite an educated crowd, so it, that, that was kind of cool. But it was all right, it was all right. And obviously, happy way with the results, Steve went out there and got a win. <laughs> Aye, um, the win was important, obviously, against that calibre of guy. Um, the performance in the third round, I think, he could have went to that in round two. <coughs> um, <clears throat> the fight actually went a wee bit different than I expected. Michael Johnson started a wee bit slower. And a wee bit more calculated than we had anticipated. You can actually hear me saying in between round one and two, like that, that Johnson will slow down now because he's, he's got a habit of doing that. He's, he's, he's usually really, really dangerous in that round one. Mm -hmm. And uh, his speed tends to shock people a wee bit. But he, ne he never done that with, with Stevie. You can see he actually, it was the speed in round two shocks. There's a wee bit we had to adjust to the speed, um, which Stevie did near the end of the round and then, and then changed it up in round three. But the the win was important there and then the performance was good like the I've watched it back a couple of times I think Stevie took the, the first round and the and the third round was, was the most dominant round of the fight it was pretty convincing yeah so happy with that especially obviously when Stevie got on got on top of him and in terms of actually you were talking about Johnson's speed did when you're seeing him in person fighting Stevie was it was it was he exactly as you thought he would be in terms of how fast he was or there's something lost in the tape with him I was at uh, I knew he was quick more for that. we were at the fight when he fought Artem Stevie was on that card yep. um, but there's when he came into the cage we we had seen some sh some stuff and we'd heard some stuff of guys who'd been in his camp that he was maybe carrying an injury I think he'd said in, a, in an interview that he was and we were thinking maybe that would affect him but when you watch him at the start and he comes into the, the cage we were looking directly across at him and he shoots a whole double leg and then he does this vertical jump and me and Danny Hen were just like, oh shit. Like, we're like he's, he's not injured and he's a super athletic dude. Like the way he, the way he did it was perfect. Um, and you can see in it, the guy, the guy's very good. Um, he's a good man. Uh, it, was, it was a really good fight. Obviously, both guys fought well and getting into, obviously, after the second round when you're in the corner with Stevie, you've obviously you felt Stevie won the second to Michael Michael, uh, Stevie the first Michael the second what is it you're saying to Stevie then are you just trying to emphasise the importance in making sure he gets this third round I, I actually you can hear me saying it was possibly two down going into mm -hmm. uh, round three and the, the most important was that he wins round three I actually right. I did have him I had it around each going into round three but I didn't even really want Stevie thinking that either so I wanted a big round three off him um, which he gave us um, it was similar to the situation when, we, when he did Joe Lowe's on fight where he mm -hmm. went into round three and I was like, that first round's a 10-8 to him. You win round two, but we need a good round three. Um, it's, you need to just be honest with him, to be fair. But I knew he had, he had more to come in the, the, the attempted takedowns that failed early on, came back, um, and we made the adjustments where, where he, when he got the takedown, it was because Johnson was close up the cage, so the sprawl yeah. couldn't work. Um but I, I sent him out for round three wanting him to push the pace a wee bit. I think he could have maybe got the stoppage with, with the choke of he'd punched for the choke, but he says he never felt it was there. Um, and then there's some people saying they thought maybe the ref could have stopped it, but any time the, the ref got near him, Johnson was saying to the ref, I'm fine, I'm fine, and, and he was he was allowed to work at it. So it was good, man, it was good. The only thing missing was if Steve had finished them, it would have been, it would have been good. Aye, but ultimately the... 
Stevie got the result. Michael Johnson didn't look too happy. It was in said after it or that. They were fine. Um, I spoke to Henry Hooft as well as coach, and the guys knew like Johnson's. Johnson's <coughs> rightfully pissed because he, he fought well. It was a good yeah. version of Michael Johnson that turned up. Because we, um, when Stevie got the fight, we were thinking maybe we're getting a diminished version of him because he's. He's just came off a loss to Josh Emmett. If you look at his record there the last couple of years, it's been up and down, but it, it was a really good version we got of him. Um, and and I'm glad that we got that version of him because it brought the best out in Stevie. But I think that when he's went away and looked at it, he's he's probably calmed down a wee bit and mm-hmm. thought, right, that's... The, the third round was the most dominant round there. Aye, just emotions obviously running high after the fight. Yeah, and yeah. I guess when you've put that much time into it and thought, well, it's it's, it's a disappointment. Going home with one check instead of two is the thing. That, Aye, that, that's, that's what guys going to be thinking. Some, sometimes you do forget about that. That's the yeah. pay structure now, anyway, yeah. and it's sometimes depending on a guy's contract. I mean, it's a it's a big big chunk of change that you're losing out on. It's a lot of money, man. I especially if he's got a family and stuff like that. How important as well, Jake? That way? obviously that's. Stevie's biggest fight to date, just in terms of who it was against and obviously coming off some some losses and stuff like that as well. How, how important is that for Stevie in terms of his career and just his confidence going forward in, in the promotion in the UFC? Uh, it's massive. I, I think the confidence thing's the issue. His confidence is back now. Mm-hmm. Um, he's, he's been, he's had such kind of highs and lows with the UFC, Stevie, where He's had, he won his first three fights and he stopped the first two guys and he was so busy so early and then we took that risky fight with Alan Patrick that, that was a close fight mm-hmm. um, against an undefeated guy away and an awkward guy and, and he lost the decision and then he's came back and won again but the, the Johnson fight we, we knew going into it like if you beat this guy it kind of erases the Cajun loss and to an extent the Santos loss Um and it, it means we can just start again with, with your confidence back because he's, he's now got that name as uh, on his record with Lowe's on and Pearson and it's like three the <clears throat> this three like top drawer fighters he's, he's beat now um, I think the thing with him is just is getting the type of guys that'll have that type of fight with him where Santos was was not the, the perfect fight for him um, and Cage and Johnson similar to even the Jess Nayari fight was a guy who was he wasn't really there to fight he was there to steal a steal a victory um, yeah. but Johnson came to fight so we knew like if somebody comes to fight with Stevie there's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to suit us um, but I confidence wise it's it's been massive for him I can see it and I'm even in the gym um, he's, he's right back in the gym straight away and then career wise it's, it's put him in a good position now as well Aye, and when you when you look at the division, obviously getting the Michael Johnson fight, it moves moves him up the division and opens up options for him. When you're looking at that division and guys that are ahead of him and stuff like that, is there any particular fights you would really like to Stevie to get? Um, I'll just take care of the givers. To be honest, that that divisions that divisions different for any other division in the sport. When you look at it, we we sit when we're away in the hotel and stuff. Sometimes we'll sit with the with the rankings and stuff and if you look at the, the lightweight division even up to the top 40 the mm. names in there is, is incredible you're just yeah. like holy shit like a- anybody who gets going to be decent um, um, there's nobody really like if they came and said who do you want I'd have, we'd have to go away and kind of think about it uh-huh. to an extent but there's nobody really whoever they give us are, are going to give us a um, so just whoever as long as they keep moving them moving them forward um a, a decent progression that's fine and hopefully keep getting his guys it's going to make them be an, ex, an exciting fight um, yeah. we'll try and iron out stuff in the gym about how to deal with the guys who's, who's going to try and steal wins off them and, and just edge it I guess the other thing as well with that division because it is so deep there's obviously a lot of household names in it but there's a lot of guys in there that are, are no household names and are absolute killers and I guess that's always yeah. the, the danger in a division like that that was the thing with that we 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 are Santos. I know they, yeah. a lot of guys were, have no idea who he is. All they know is he done in Kevin Lee. He hadn't fought in a couple of years, but like I know who he was for, for jiu jitsu circles. I was like, he's one of the best jiu jitsu players in the world. And then he's at he was at Nova Unyao, one of the best striking gyms in the world. And if you watch him, he's 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 frightening. But no, nobody kind of nobody really get interested in that fight but then when they've seen what, what, now what he's done to Stevie everybody wants to watch that guy fight but there's, there's every guy in that division is like that um, there's some of the Russian guys you've never heard of they're killers but 
the, the division's just horrific. Eh? It's just a, it's an absolute nightmare. Uh, it seems to be, well, it's always kind of been for, especially over the last, last years, the lightweight division's just, it's just a continuous line of absolute killers coming through. Yep. Yep. And so I guess it's always going to be, it's always going to be difficult. But was it, a, the other thing as well, was it a culture shock? <laughs> so you've went for the heady heights of Singapore to next stop, then Allah. For Budo, <laughs> it's it's a it's a bit of a culture shock. Isn't it? <laughs> Singapore to Singapore to Alawa. No offence to MDF Alawa, by the way, but aye, it's just um, I've had that before, man. We yeah. going through for Stevie fighting Joe Owens on one week to I think the week after I was at Head Hunters with Kieran Conlon and stuff like that. It's just it's the same. It's a fight. Um, so you're there, kind of other than the the settings and and the the guys. In the, in the crowd and stuff like that it's pretty much the same kind of thing for me and the fighter but it was a bit of a culture shock getting standing out in the hall waiting on, <laughs> on the, the ring announcer calling the guys names and you're getting these guys stumbling out the toilets and fucking getting in the way and, and stuff like Aye. that like, but it is what it is at that, that level ah, there was a, there was a, definitely a few drunk <coughs> folk in our last certainly wasn't one of them but <laughs> <That's> <laughs> crazy. one thing I, before we start talking about the actual fights something that happened in one of the fights it was one of the maddest things I've seen at an MMA show. Um, so when Kieran was fighting uh, Aaron Towns, yep. did you see the bit in the corner when the two of them went out of the cage and did you hear the smash? Aye, a vase or something smashed. It was, like a, it was like a big fishbowl but with, uh, <clears throat> with a candle in it. Right. And it was uh, obviously they went down and hot it and super, super lucky <laughs> that that didn't cut somebody open. Uh, that was insane I don't know so in future maybe don't put put the big fish bowls uh, right next to the cage aye I've seen the back in the day I think it was at Meadow Bank when, when MMA was still in boxing rings one of our guys threw a guy right through the ropes into all the trophies uh, and <laughs> stabbed him <laughs> stabbed him with a trophy <laughs> broke all the trophies in the one one move unintentional uh, stabbing then aye, aye. maybe unintentional it was a guy from Dumbarton so he probably meant it <laughs> aye, aye that, that, I seen that with the, the glass smashing man. aye was, I don't even think the, the fighters actually noticed <coughs> it to be honest when I spoke to them after it but overall we'll go we'll go through the fights um, what was your thoughts on the night itself for the guys at the gym? It was sort of <laughs> kind of a mixed bag, wasn't it? Aye, we had we had a it was a good night overall, but mm-hmm. we like two or better guys on there. Um, <clears throat> all our guys had good fights. Like we never, as like always, we never picked any easy fights. All our guys were matched with guys either more experienced mm-hmm. or they'd been training longer. Um, it was a good night for me as a coach because there's some mistakes there that that a couple of months better amateur guys are making that needs to be dealt with and it it's not the, the thing is I've seen both I'm talking about Mark and Kunle, yeah, yeah. Um I've seen these mistakes before uh-huh. but I've still won fights making these mistakes but they were they were both matched against guys with bigger records than theirs and, and good guys for, for a solid team um, so it gives me a, it gives me sort of stuff to work on with them but we're uh, we've got one more fight this year on the 24th Sean Clancy's fighting um, mm-hmm. and then we shut down December, January, there'll be no fights out till maybe February the fifteenth, I think, when when Evolution of Combat's back in Glasgow. Yeah. Um and we just set that aside that time aside for for working on stuff. Um so it was it was all right. We we had two new guys at first. So we uh, Stephen Skipton and Kevin Swank and both guys lost the first round and I was uh-huh. like, Oh, it's gonna be one of the nights. And both came back and won. Then we had Mark out, I think was next and he had an absolute crazy fight. Aye, aye. I was fight. I was, probably, I was fighting the night mm. without, a, without a doubt. Um, he got hurt in the first round. He's he got hurt somewhere to he, his last fight before that. Made for the cage. He fought a Russian kid who countered him with son. So there's a gap there in his his defence that that needs a that needs addressed. So I spoke to him about it and he'll fix it. He's he's obsessed uh-huh. with being world class. That kid and he will be. But um, so that'll get fixed. But he. He showed son in that fight that not a lot of people have. He was out on his feet. Mm-hmm. The second or third time he got dropped, he fell on a double leg and finished it. And it, was, it got him enough just to get out of the first round. And then he won round two and three and got a draw, um, which is it's impressive. Mm-hmm. Um, but he also showed he won that fight with wrestling. He's known as a striker. Yep. Um, he's, he's knocked a lot. He's got quite a high uh, rate of KOs. But <clears throat> he won that with wrestling, which was impressive because... If you'd gave him that fight twelve months ago, he wouldn't have he wouldn't have been able to wrestle that guy at the ground. The guy was solid. The guy uh, had eighteen or nineteen amateur fights. The guy was saying after that he'd actually had two pro fights signed, 
and both of them fell through so he took the amateur fight just to get a fight this year and, and Mark wants to fight the, that level of guy yeah. like it was a, that was a pro level fight both yeah. of these guys were excellent um, and I'm, I'm happy that Mark's came through that adversity I know he, he's, he's like that anyway I've seen him fight before he fought Martin Russell in here and you'll not stop that kid um, and that again that's stuff that you can really teach so I can fix the defensive stuff um, and, and he'll fix it himself he's a smart kid but I was happy with that um, couldn't, we, couldn't we replaced Lee, Lee, Lee Johnson yeah. at short notice and, and it was a different style of fight for Kunlin. He was coming off the Danny Naismith loss and again he made the same mistakes that cost him the Danny Naismith fight. So the, the positive is I, I can narrow in on the mistakes, go away and, and make him fix it. He was back in the gym that weekend. We've already started addressing some of the issues but again he went out and fought against, I think the guy was 8-1 and one or 9-1 and, and, and Kunlin was still only like 4-2 and two or something at the time. Um, and the other thing, Kunlin was, was under the weight like six days before the weigh-in, so he needs to he needs to address that. Where well, that guy was bigger, that guy, that guy was a big was a proper welterweight. But yeah, he, he fought well. He did some good stuff in the first and the second round. He lost the back twice, and he paid for it. Um, yeah, and uh, again, again, it, it showed what we need work on. And then with Kieran Reid as well, um, and Kieran just showed. I think Kieran might have some of the best MMA grappling in the UK. Once he gets his, his wrestling's improved massively, he's got a better he's got a better handle on the distance management now for his shape and his range. And, mm-hmm. and Aaron Towns is a good fighter. Um, and you could see Kieran just mentally broke him eh, with that, that pressure. Aye, you could see it happening. We'll talk, talk about the Kieran one first, but just to jump back to the Mark Ewan fight, I was actually standing with Martin Russell watching the fight mm-hmm. and Martin was commenting on uh, uh, Mark's Mark's wrestling, and he he happened to mention how how much Mark's wrestling's come on over the year, yeah. and that then potentially is what obviously helped him. But like you say, he did did get hurt a few times as well. But Lee Lee Johnson as well, I think uh, he commented that ultimately that could be a big benefit for Mark because he's been running through guys. Yeah, um, that something like that just shows him where where like obviously in yourself as well. Yeah, he need adversity. Um, that's why he's, he's want those fights early on. Eh? We don't mm. want to. I don't want to see him get hurt like that again. Yeah. I, I, I didn't enjoy watching it. No. Um, and to be honest, if Craig, if the referee had stopped <clears> it in that first round, he, he had every right to. But uh, I'm, I'm glad he didn't. He? But it, it will. He'll, he'll fix it because I know how Mark's mind works. Eh? And he he he's better than that. He's he got caught early. He never really got a chance to. To, to fix it and then you get caught with the same thing twice so it, it it's not a it's not a luck thing it's a there's a there's an error there Aye. there's a technical technical discrepancy that, that we can fix um it did. He, he can he'll learn for that massively so it'll not happen to him again yeah and it did look like craig seemed to be kind of he, he wasn't he, he was almost he looked yeah. like he was that close yeah i think they could say to after it he just he just wanted to give him another 10 settings yeah and ultimately obviously i think he survived that's the, the benefit of having a guy who used to fight as the ref mm-hmm. um they'll, they'll sometimes give the guys a wee bit more a wee bit more kind of time um but he would have been he could have stopped it and nobody <clears throat> would have argued about it to be honest Aye. I, and we'll, we'll come back obviously to the Kieran Reid fight because obviously it was a strange finish to the fight so just for them that, it, that Disney know anything about it so it was obviously it was for a, uh, an amateur title um, so it was five five rounds it was announced though as you were walking out as a three round fight which yeah. was a mistake for the announcer but I think Kieran himself he knew it was he knew it was far five rounds and I'm assuming Aaron did know at some point it was five rounds but the three, ro- three rounds that preceded the finish Kieran was just, he gave him nothing. He was on top of him. He was on him constantly. And yep. uh, I think Ian Arn commented after it as well. I just think Arn mentally just bro- just broke in the fight. Uh, for, for your point of view, do you think that's that's what happened? Yep. You can feel it when you're, when a lot of the, the fight actually took <coughs> place on the fence and on the ground, run about our corner. Um, but you can feel it as. It's, it's like that thing when people die and you, they talk about their soul leaving their body and right. stuff like that you can feel that with you guys eh? and Kieran would have felt it more when you're actually in there you can f- it's, it's a weird weird sensation where you can feel people break eh? mm-hmm. and if you're the guy doing the breaking it's the best feeling in a fight eh? you're yeah. like right, this is done he's he's been in a survival mode here um, and then it, but the flip side is if you're the guy breaking then <clears throat> 
you're in a lot of, you're in a lot of trouble with, and it's maybe not the sport for you. That that should be. I, I can't comment for Aaron because the kid can fight and, mm-hmm. and he's he's probably been in bad sports before and came through it. But um, the, the systems you have in place should iron that out in the gym. Like I'll I'll put guys in here and all sorts of positions like that when they're tired and whatever. And if they break in the gym, I won't let them near the cage. Does that make sense? Aye, aye. Um, so that has to be addressed. Um, there's a couple ways he could have fought. He could have he could have done the three rounds and been like. Right, and he maybe didn't know about the five rounds he put. I've just had my arse kicked. Um, and they're saying, I've got another two to go, I'm not doing it. Or he could have been like, I've got two rounds, I'm going to get him. Mm-hmm. I can ca- I can still catch him. Because he, he has the capability of catching guys. We've seen him do it at shows before. Uh, starching people and stuff. He's, he's kickboxing's good. He's like a world kickboxing champion. And he's got that horrible style that's really hard to prepare for with the side on, with the point style stuff. Um, but... He, he, it was just a bad night for the kid. Um, where yeah. where he goes for there, I don't know. He'll need to he'll need to live with that himself. I, I kind of had a chat, had a chat with one of his teammates, Fraser Hurst, and I had a wee bit of a chat with Arne as well after it. Uh, I think immediately after the fight, I think what set in for him was regret. Yeah, I think I think that was the main thing. He, he regretted it. Basically, if he, if he, I don't want to speak out of turn here, so Arne, you can comment on this if I'm wrong. But uh, I think his mindset in that third man was he just felt like there was nothing he could do to change the situation mm-hmm. and he just didn't want to go on our two rounds now obviously hindsight's twenty twenty, and after it he, he'd regretted it but I think uh, uh, with that style like it wasn't like he was getting smashed he was getting mm-hmm. controlled mm-hmm. Um, which is different like that it's like you've been f- physically dominated you've been positionally dominated it's a bit different whereas if he was getting smashed up um, there was a, that fight in the UFC recently with that guy Mike Davis and I think we talked this before but Aye. he smashed that guy to bits and, and eventually knocked the guy out with 10 seconds left but the the, the corner should have pulled him out if you were getting Aye. hurt there you, you can pull him out and the guy can go away and he can fix his problems and he can come back and fight another time but he wasn't getting like Kieran was 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 dominating him yeah, and, absolutely. And, but it wasn't like it wasn't like it was a pro fight where he was allowed to elbow him in the head and stuff but Aaron will know like it's it's going to be it'll be hard for him to take that because he'll know like he's done that um, and that that doubt will be there for the kid for a bit now so he he need to move on for it I think uh, I sp- I spoke to Fraser as well and and I don't think Fraser is uh, Fraser's the complete opposite I think Aye. he had that fight with Camille where Camille beat him for two rounds and then Fraser beat the shit out of Camille in round three he would keep going and keep going but. It might just be that thing on the night. That's how he felt. Like you could get him on another night, and he wouldn't. He wouldn't break like that. I think for what I'd say, said as well is you've got to look at who he's fought. He's fought obviously. If we look at the amateur bantle mates in Scotland, he's fought Kieran Reid undefeated. No yeah. doubt, what he is, he's an absolute nightmare for MD in there at the level he's at. And then obviously Dries McEwen before that again, yeah. one of, one of the best guys in the country. The kid uh, for Aberdeen he fought as well. Is it? Yeah. Uh, is it Chris Nicholls or something? So, so I mean he's if I, if looking at it from to- Town's point of view he's going in there and he's fighting the best guys he can available so I suppose the only way for him to look at it is look at the areas that he's, str- he's struggling in, in fights and, and yeah. if he's serious about proceeding forward that's something he's, he's got to have to address Aye he's from a good team as mm-hmm. well him. They, yeah. they guys have been a bit a long time and they always their guys are always always come out prepared I don't know I can't comment on how he's training and stuff like that mm-hmm. I don't know but for me as a coach I've never really had a guy do that in there. Like I've had guys in in here take like beatings for fourteen minutes and still pull out a win. I've had get. I've never had anybody completely outclassed to, to mm-hmm. an extent where I've, where it looked like a mismatch. But I've had guys losing and then, and then pulling it back. And if you'd offered them maybe an, an extra round or two at the end, they would have they'd have fucking bit your hand off to take yeah. it. Um, but we again, I'm I'm really careful to develop that in the gym. Like by putting them under pressure and making them do that wee bit extra and then it's just it's cultivating a mindset as well as the physical skills and uh, he's in a gym where there's, there's guys that could be doing that from I don't know how how they work stuff but right. it, it has to be addressed that stuff as well yeah uh, just a combination of things obviously you've got to look at you to look at Cairn's performance as well I mean that that would have been a difficult night for any uh, amateur bantamweights in Scotland yeah. uh, against Cairn, and obviously he's he picked up the win. Uh, he done everything he was meant to do. What would you would you see next going forward for Cairn? Um, he'll either turn pro next mm-hmm. year or 
We've been working on some stuff with the the IMAF set up. Uh, the World Championships is going on now, but yeah, we've been working on maybe uh, we will eventually have. There's going to be a team Scotland there, so yeah. whether Kieran wants to do the Europeans, I think they're in Rome in April, and then the Worlds again <coughs> in November next year, um, or turn pro. It'll be it'll be either one of them two. He'll not be hanging about amateur unless. He's gone to the, the IMAFs. Um, no. he'll, he'll turn pro, but I think Kieran's a wee bit older than, than some of the other kids who, who want to do the IMAF stuff, but it'll either be that or, or turns pro. But that's him 7 and 0, and he's had some good, he's beat some good opposition. His game's improved, he's developed, a, his game's developed into a style that suits him now, his yeah. body shape and his skill set, which he never really had before. Um, so it'll either be that, either. See, I kind of fight. I was hoping that the happen is obviously I know you've got um, the lad who competes in a lot of the IMAFs down south, eh? is it Mokayev? Yep. Yeah, yeah I, I, I would have liked to have seen that. At some, I guess it's something we could see down the line. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I feel Kieran, I think, spoke about that in the past. I f- think he feels he's got the, the recipe to eh? win Co- that one. He can cause anybody problems with the, mm. the shape of him at that weight yeah. um, and his skill set. He's he's very very good on the ground. His grappling's good and his wrestling's got got so much better. You could see, he's he's there was a lot of variation in his wrestling in that fight. Uh, the first couple of times he, he was getting taken down to so the clinch and then he's spending a lot of time dealing with Aaron was uh, framing really well and regarding. So Kieran wasn't really getting a lot of strikes. But then in the third round he, he changed it up and shot the double leg and he passed the guard queen off the takedown so mm-hmm. the most pressure Arnold have felt in that fight was round three because he never yeah. had the he never had the exchanges for guard where they were fighting for guard there was a straight pass and then it was straight into wrist trap and, and stuff there so but Kieran showed uh, how, how diverse his wrestling game is with mm-hmm. that fight and it's, it's something I've heard guys commenting for you I think Mark Ewan it was that said on here that Kieran's a nightmare to train with because you just can't get him off you his grappling's excellent he was he was Fairly accomplished grappler before he turned yeah. to MMA. He, he purposely he took a year out at uh, Everin and I think he travelled over Europe doing all the IBJJF comps at Purple Belt and won the Euros and stuff. So he's he should be like a brown belt by now pushing pushing for black, but uh, he's obviously not training as much in the gi than, than his jiu-jitsu, but he's, all his jiu-jitsu has crossed over to MMA really well. Yeah. Right, so I uh, was uh, so we were ha- ultimately happy at the end of the night. Just before I f- uh, we actually come away from Budo, we'd go back to the two two guys that were debuting, uh, Kevin Swanky and uh, is it Steven, S- Steven Skipton? Yep. Yep. So when I was looking at their fights, it was kind of similar. Like you said, the first round was pretty rough for them, but I almost felt like their opponents, it looked like they'd put so much into trying to finish that fight. I always felt like that, that second round was maybe going to turn good for them. Did you, is that something you've seen in the fights? It's quite common at amateur that. Yeah. Um, one one thing I came away with it was that I think sometimes I'm letting them spar a wee bit too light in here, so they mm-hmm. they've they've been they've been ran off the first round with the, the the intensity of the guy coming at them, whereas we don't really <coughs> we don't have that type of sparring in here too much. Um, but the, the, there's a common thing that happens with these type of fights where the first uh, the first round will show you who's the most athletic, so you can see yeah. who's the fastest and the strongest. And then the second round, you'll see who's the m- most technical, which is how my guys both win there. Mm-hmm. Um, they, they, they maybe go out muscled and out speeded, and they get, the guys got a jump on them in round one. Um, and then usually what happens if it goes to round three, you'll find out who's the better fighter, you'll find out who wants it the most, because yeah. one guy will still be trying. Um, and that that's pretty much what happened in that fight. The 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 athletes kind of win the first round. Both my guys are athletic, but they let mm-hmm. the other guys get the jump on them. But then the difference in round two is the the, the technical aspects of the game came out. Both the guys ended up getting takedowns, getting mount. The guys turned the back and have choked them. And that, right. that's day, that's day one MMA uh, but pathways. But that that's pretty much how the the fights played out. Is it is there an element as well? Obviously, the guys have been in here training. You feel they're ready to fight as well. Otherwise, you wouldn't have them fighting. You've seen them sparring, but ultimately, the first time stepping in the cage, it's going to it's going to feel different for them because it's their first time yep. being in a, a proper actual MMA fight. Rather, so is there, is there an intrigue for you there to see how they react to that situation? The first one's always the is one of the more important mm-hmm. ones because you never know what you're going to get with them. I think uh, one of the things that, that affected the guys is the majority of their sparring's done with guys who are much, much more uh, experienced than them. Mm-hmm. So, like, <coughs> Kevin's sparring 
you can spar with Stevie Mop or Danny Henry or, or Stevie Ray and they guys are not going to jump on him because he's Aye. an amateur guy who's not had a fight um, and then the rest of the time they're sparring with teammates who are not going to jump on them because it's a teammate but I think that that's definitely something we need to look at um, in the future maybe have the amateur guys spar together a wee bit mm-hmm. more and, and, and stuff like that but both of the like, like you said you, n- you never know what you're getting with the, with the first one is. so the first one's always massively important and both guys dealt with it really well um, the, the occasion they were both excited they'd done everything they were asked to do and I think both of them usually they'll have the first one and then after it you'll know if they're going to do it again Aye. some of them will be like I'm not doing that ever again even if they win they're like I, I didn't enjoy it and then the other way is they're like when can I do it again I want to do it again I want to do it again and I, I think both of them are, are probably going to want to do it again right can you sort of, I suppose this has got to be different from time to time, but you can you get an idea uh, with a guy making his debut once you see him in there and how he's reacting to things? Can you tell if it's for the guy or if this is probably going to be a one and, one and done? Um, you, with the systems we've got in place here, usually I can tell and if they're not mentally breaking with what I put them through in the gym, mm-hmm. generally they'll be all right in there. Um, and then you can tell even with the way they conduct themselves in the changing rooms and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. They know they're going to be nervous um, and they know that to expect that and, and whatever else. They know the, the kind of physiology of that, the, the fight or flight stuff and everything. They know how it... Because by the time they guys get, get to fight in there, they've been to maybe 10 or 15 shows and I'll have them backstage and they've walked mm-hmm. out to the cage with teammates we're kind of doing that the new way like Tundi with Coonley's brother eh? mm-hmm. um, and, and some of our younger guys next year are going to do it but there's still just that unknown that when you put them in there and it's you're outside um, and it's somebody that they just met yesterday at the way and I'd have watched a bit of tape on you you just don't know what you're going to get but most of the systems in the gym are going to <coughs> test them with that stuff eh? aye and do, just get the other thing we had the semi-pro boxing yep. fight as well Um what was your thoughts? Now, obviously, it ultimately ended pretty badly. It was a, it looked like a pretty bad knockout. Yeah. Um. What was your thoughts on that? Eh, uh, I, I didn't like the way it ended. Obviously, um, mm-hmm. Stephen Stephen started training just to to make some changes in his lifestyle. He's, mm-hmm. he's no, he's an older guy with a kid and, and and stuff like that. And he's he's there's a lot of guys come to the gym like that. They maybe what he clean up their lifestyle or, or they need a focus or something and he trains so hard um, he's, he's brilliant in the gym he's, he's, he's in five days a week eh? mm-hmm. um, and then he was he was meant to be matched on Forza uh, his opponent pulled it he's from Edinburgh like he kind of matched his cell and I was we, I didn't really put guys on that Forza show mm-hmm. um, he, and then his opponent pulled it and then he was getting offered I can't I mean he offered this guy who'd box for England and stuff like that <laughs> and I was like I'm not doing that. Um, let me see who I can get. And we got uh, the kid for Smack. Yeah. And uh, Daniel, I think his name is. And, yeah. And I was like, that's fair enough. He's been training the same amount of time. He's younger than you, which is a, a, an advantage to him, but you'll be fine. And then he had a good first round. I think he actually won the first round 10-7. He, okay. The guy had a couple of counts. He had a good second round, but he's had a, he's had a bit of an adrenaline dump round three. I think mm-hmm. he could see his shape starting to go. Um, and just an experience. I don't think he was aware of how long there was left because it was right. literally on the belly it stopped when he was he had that 5-1 um, which is a hard one for him to take and stuff but again he's came so far in the 10 months his life's completely different from where it was the, the fight's at the fight and he's, he's going to take that bad like it's, it's no nice um, and again it wasn't nice for me to watch similar to the marking but uh, thankfully he's alright and he's back in the gym but he needs to be proud of himself man because he's, mm-hmm. he's coming in, in here to a gym with the level of guys here and he, <clears throat> and he's, he puts in so much work eh? um, and everybody in here fucking loves him like he's um, so he should be proud of he maybe never got the ending he deserved the, the kid landed a nice punch and stuff but it, that's the reality eh? aye it was that that was the thing it was he'd, he obviously hurt him hurt his opponent a few times uh, he definitely looked like he was winning the fight and it was just yeah. it couldn't it, it was Right, right on the buzzer. Aye. And obviously it was it was bad knockout. I don't know if that was added to be where he landed on the on the cage the back of his head. That looked that yeah. actually looked worse to me than the punch. the punch itself. Aye. I think it was a combination of that and he was really tired at that mm-hmm. point because he took harder punches earlier. Aye. But uh, you could see like his shape and all that. 
started to go a wee bit and then it's a combination of being tired maybe off balance when he got hit and he did bang his head in the way down but yeah. uh, thankfully he's alright and he'll no he'll no look back on it fondly just now but it, mm -hmm. it was a big achievement for him getting in there and doing that well he's done something a lot of people don't do or wouldn't they step yeah. in the cage a lot of people yeah. would think that's uh, lunacy but uh, he's obviously went in there and up until the point the fight finished he was doing he done well I I seen well, actually when I when I heard it see him I could see the judges scorecard and he was it was he had a ten seven round one and a ten nine round two so mm. the only way he could lose was to get to get stopped and unfortunately mm. he got caught right on the bell. That's that's a downside for some for uh, when you're in the sport sometimes the lessons are extremely cruel. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I so it's I mean I enjoyed the night itself. It's the first time I've been and it's actually the first time I've been a been to Budo I enjoyed the night itself although I saw a couple of dodgy things happening uh, yeah. some people partaking in uh, oh the usual the usuals but very openly literally as I'm walking by there's a lad who's sitting in a bag I'm like Jesus uh, Christ everywhere yeah, it's absolutely Jesus everywhere. Uh, so I uh, so it was uh, ultimately a good night a lot of, lot of learning then it was a good fight card actually when mm -hmm. you sit back and look about it and compare it to some of the other Scottish ones it was a really good fight card Um but aye, the, the 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 two new boys debuting was good. Kieran just keeps getting better, which was good. Um, <coughs> Mark's fight was was what it was. We'll, we'll we'll take some lessons for that, and and the same with Kunle. Um And then Stephen, I think if you ask him, he would have said he enjoyed it, other than the ending. But uh, mm -hmm. I don't know what we'll do with him next. I think he's back like doing some MMA now, so. Maybe so how, how did it come about he went into boxing was that just what got offered and he might have fancied it uh, yeah, I think that that Forza show were having cage boxing this, so he just came in one day and said he was training MMA anyway he was doing jiu-jitsu uh -huh. and stuff um, he's like I've took this boxing match on that show um, I, th I don't know if he's maybe used to train at that club or something uh -huh. um, and then it was like right we'll, we'll just train boxing then until the, the fight mm -hmm. but aye uh, so the, you you said you've got one more fight coming up then, so is that Sean? Sean, Sean Clancy on, uh, what's it called? Rise of Combat or something? Rise and Conquer, Andrew Rise Fisher's and Conquer. show. Ah, right, right, right. Um, it's on Fisher's show at the end of the month. Ah, right, is that down in Sunderland? Sun Sunderland, aye. Uh, he's fighting a kid called Zach Marshall, I think, didn't he? And they're doing pretty well. I saw... Uh, I saw Justin Burlinson, he's moved over to, uh, to TFT. Good, he good, was training, uh, was it a dungeon he was training that? Uh, aye, I've, I've spoken about that team before, they're an excellent team. I think when we mm. spoke about the scope and the aye. and Cal Pacino fights, um, they're, that's a good team, man. it's a solid, solid team. Aye, funnily enough, actually, just um, we're moving away from Budo, but obviously Tony Mustard fought, uh, Rab. fought Rab Trusdale. Did you stay and catch that fight? I never watched it, man. I knew, uh, I know both of the guys, I know Tony was in South Africa with us. Mm -hmm. um, when when I was there with Danny before and then obviously you've seen Rab about and then he's, he's been in here once <coughs> or twice but I knew it'd be both of them were good guys I knew it was going to be that type of fight where mm -hmm. I didn't think any of them would stop each other but I never seen it I seen those some of them moaning about the results and stuff but they, they can maybe do that fight again I think Aye, well, there was it was hard to see there was some elbows obviously that, that did seem to have an impact on Rab and it did look like uh, some of them hot at the back of the head uh, I couldn't see to be honest with you I was more concerned about the fucking, the fucking cage going through because um, yeah, obviously Rab was looked like he was still play, uh, playing rugby trying to, try to put Tony through the cage I think he came um, straight for a 12 hour shift for that as well I he did I, I, you said that actually post fight he ended up having to go and do a 12 hour shift then then uh, then go straight in and fight and uh, I don't know there was a few folks standing around that who didn't weren't familiar with Tony but I've seen Tony fight a few times uh, for Bellator so I said it was going to be uh, it's a, a good, good fight, fight. Uh, it's, a, it's a fight that could have happened on any of the bigger shows as well mm -hmm. to be honest both, it's not a lot of heavyweights about um, no. was, I think Rab's maybe the only heavyweight up here and then Tony, Tony's a good good fighter like uh, there's no uh, have we get some have we get uh, um, any amateur heavyweights or that must be. Only, I think the only one I knew about Hanky moved to like hey, was Jamie McDonald. Aye, I think that's it. Um, the rest of them are all, they're all lighter. Aye, we're no Scottish, only known as a big people. Nah. Uh, we're no, no, no the tallest in the world. Um, so obviously the other thing that's that's been happening recently with the newly introduced BMF belt, the the bad motherfucker belt yep. or baddest motherfucker. What what do you reckon of that belt as a concept and? Uh, I didn't like it to be honest uh, I thought 
they could have sold that fight without the belt. Aye. It's a good, like, when you... It was, it was a good fight. It's, it's two really popular fighters fighting each other. I knew Masvidal was going to beat him, and the guy's moaning about the stoppage, I think. Or, there's no way Nate Diaz was going to do anything other than what was happening there. Um, I, I didn't like the idea. Look, you don't know where that's going to end now. Eh? I mm -hmm. could have... You can make stuff up now and just have guys fighting for any sorts of belts. The problem with it is, and the biggest problem I've seen with it is, two of them are obviously tough. Uh, they're obviously experienced. They've been about, about the game for a while. But they're not even the BMF, say, the 170 division. No. Or the one the 155 either. Uh, so it was a bit of a... Again, it was a wee bit of a silly belt. I get why they've done it. They've thought it would add some sales and obviously bring the rock in and stuff. Um, the main complaint I think for folk was that they felt Diaz could have come on strong which I kind of thought about but then it, to me it didn't look like Masvidal was slowing down nah he had he had his number there style wise that was a perfect fight for Masvidal mm -hmm. Diaz, Diaz wasn't going to change in and up and people keep going on about Diaz's cardio and stuff like that but I think he lost round four against Connor in the, like the second fight and then he's been out for so long and stuff like that but Masvidal was kind of flying in the way, so mm -hmm. that, that fight went pretty much exactly how I thought it would other than the stoppage. I think if we never cut him, it would have just been, been a 50-45, it would have been a clear whitewash with the judges. Do, do you think that fight then, or obviously depending on what happens with Colby Usman, do you think they're lining Masvidal to uh, I think, obviously fight, fight one of them next? Aye, I think they would. They, they could sell, they could have a narrative with the... The Colby stuff. Colby hanging anyway. the ex teammate. Um, I think they'd probably do that, but um, I think that'll be the move if Colby wins. I don't know if they'll put him with Usman. I don't know if he'll beat either of the guys, to be honest. Aye, because a local uh, Colby's pretty ridiculous. He's he's obviously, strengths have been, both guys' strengths have been masked with Al's weakness over the years. Uh, Apparently, he's not like that when you meet him. Apparently, he's, that's 100% an actor. Eh? Aye. Um, yeah. But he's, he's excellent, he can fight. Yeah, he literally, as I was driving, what was it I was listening to? I was listening to a podcast and that's exactly what he said. Right. Uh, that Matt, um, behind closed doors, Colby's, he's no, nowhere near like that. He only changed that persona when he thought he was going to get cut. And then obviously there's stories of Brendan Schaub right. uh, when he was doing the food truck diaries, uh, Colby hiring girls to come here and all that. Right. So it's... There's a couple of fighters like that, where I've met a couple through the years but that were like that, uh, Colin Fletcher was like that. I mean, mm. I mean, being backstage with him, we were just talking away and stuff, and then he had to go out the door into the crowd, and it was like he just a switch went off on him, and he turned into a freak show and walked away and Aye. fucking st started doing all this mad shit. And the, I'd been in the, I think, what, at one of the UFC Londons when the, the guest fighters was uh, McGregor, Ross Pearson, Forrest Griffin, and Joanne, and I was there. And we went in a bus for the hotel to the. To the <clears throat> The Q and A thing, and then the the bus corner was just like this normal dude, and right. then as soon as he got out and people seen him, he turned like you know what I mean. It's like they they're just normal, but they put a lot of stuff on to get where they need to get. Right, it's kind of yeah. the pro wrestling effect as well, isn't yeah. it? It's just yeah. it's just your playing characters. But the thing is, it's a lot of folk moan about it and say, but it, it, it does work. It works if that's how you are. I think right. like if the guys who fake it, you can see it a mile away. Eh? The the Covington thing's so. It's so fucking outrageous. It's mm -hmm. kind of funny, but it, it kind of works from what that stupid fucking heart and right. and the, and whatever the shit he says. The <laughs> Trump but stuff and it seems to work aye. for him. Eh? Yeah. Aye, and he's cutting about with that belt all the time and that. Aye, but then I think he's he's they can always back it up. But that's the thing. They, they guys that, that they see all that shit and then you watch them getting smoked. They're like see, you just made yourself. Like I like idiot. him against Dusman because I think the two of them are very very similar. But I think I think Co I think Covington strikings. I think his striking's better, he's got more volume. Uh, there's no way he's going to tire in the fight. He's, he's it's just the size of Usman, I think, so it mm -hmm. might be the, the issue. If there's, if there's prolonged periods of wrestling and grappling, the Usman's giant compared to him, I think. But uh, if we can't get near him, then he's going to get pieced up. I think Covington can just smash him a bit. But the other thing you're going to, I think as well, you've got to take into fact that basically Usman's got effectively knee knees. He can't run. Yeah. Or anything like that. Obviously, there's still other ways doing cardio, but that has got to have an impact on you. I definitely. We've had guys in here uh, prepping for fight camps with knee injuries and stuff, and it changes everything. Eh? Yeah, cause it's all it's your movement and uh, your yeah. ability to move. And against a guy like Covington, you don't want to be staying in the one position. You want to be able to move. He's probably going to come out and try and kick the knees and on, like stamp Aye. on them or, or whatever. Aye, well, you can't fault him for that. He's <laughs> got, to, got to try and win however yeah. God that he's going to be insufferable if he wins that fight. But 
I don't know. Uh, it's, it's gonna it's gonna get crazy, I think. Um, and obviously we had a, a another a UK guy in the card. Obviously Dan Till making the jump up to to middleweight against not an easy fight to no. to debut at middleweight. Kelvin Gaston, uh, slight controversy, and uh, some people felt he didn't win the fight. What did you think of the fight and, and ultimately the judges' decision? Yeah, I thought he edged it. To be fair, I, I was impressed by how he fought because he's not shown. He's not fought all that before in the UFC. Um, and he's came in there knowing that he needed a win and he's fought... It was, there's a, a level of discipline there to fight like that uh, for 15 minutes when that's not how he naturally fights. Eh? So he's, he's, he's stuck to a game plan and, and he's got what he needed to do. If, if he'd lost that, especially if he'd been stopped in that, his career was done Aye. after the, the last two knockouts. Um, and it's hard for a fighter to fight against type like that. Um so I was impre- I was impressed with him. I thought he edged it, and, and Gaston's no mug. He's a great fighter. It wasn't that long ago he had probably the best fight of the year with Adesanya, um, and and just the the discipline to keep the distance and just do enough to win uh, was was impressive from him. Do you think it was a mature performance? It was the most mature he's looked so far. Uh-huh. Um, he's done that before. He actually fought quite measured against Jess and Ayari. I mean, watching okay. that fight before Stevie fought Ayari, um, and against the. Is the Croatian or the Serbian kid I can't mind his name but he fought like that then and then a couple of times he got a wee bit reckless chasing finishes but it was it was the most mature he's looked and I think he needed that um, it, it'll settle his career a wee bit and he, he can he can get back to being confident for it. but the losses and stuff seem to have affected him but he's he's been so honest about it and stuff like yep. that it's been quite yep. refreshing um, and it just looks like that wee that that scouse guy you now who's, who's super talented um, he's he's vulnerable, but he's 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 world class. Aye, the honesty. He's put. I think the other thing before I talk about his post fight, it's um, he obviously he made his name massive with the the way he fought against Cowboy and obviously finishing Cowboy. Do you think that's in? There's been an element of him trying to have that sort of impact in a fight after it to get the same sort of thing. Obviously, he starts starts yeah. Cerrone. That put his name out there, it blew him up, and then he's maybe tried to replicate that against guys like Woodley and uh, obviously Mass I think uh, I think the level of competition jump up for Cerrone, who's mm-hmm. a who's a, a lightweight Aye. Uh, striker who doesn't deal well with pressure. Um against Till, who's a massive welterweight who's very good at pressure. You'll mm-hmm. know for all that will walk you down and throw yeah. and force you to throw and counter. Uh, to Woodley's too too big a jump. Um I think he was he, his opponents were picked well for him to get him in a, uh-huh. the UFC needs stars absolutely so they've, they've they've managed him in a fashion that's got him to the title fight <clears throat> pretty quick against hand picked opponents he never had any, he never had a single wrestler similar to when Connor was coming up and people yeah. moaned about it but he never had a single wrestler until he hit Woodley mm-hmm. um, and and it's that jump in competition sometimes it, it, that division as well is, is, is quite similar to lightweight it's, it's really busy but you can see the difference for, for going for Cerrone a, a, a guy that Till Style is made for to yeah. Woodley um, and just catch him and then even the Masvidal thing I think they thought maybe they could get get Till back over here with a, a guy who used to fight at lightweight but mm-hmm. no uh, his mentality seems to have changed in the last the last year or so. And Masvidal is not a guy that gets finished. He's he's excellent as well. Man. Mm-hmm. Aye, as he's but he's some of the best boxing in yeah. in the UFC, and obviously he's he's riding high at the moment. Yeah. Um, but aye, it was really good fight for Till. I know the UFC really probably didn't want that, or Dana didn't want that fight for him. But he's he took a gamble fighting Gaston because Gaston's a he's a, a good fighter, man. Really, and if you look at how his striking was and the way he fought against uh, Adesanya, although there was a wee, I think there's a wee bit of trouble of the know for the Gaston and his coach Rafael Cardera for the, the using the elbow thing. the way uh, uh, So I don't know what will happen with that. I don't know that. if they'll get a fine or something. Aye, uh, I think they did get fined. There was did a couple they? guys get fined. I think. Uh, uh, who was the other guy got fined? Corey Anderson got fined, I think, for celebrating. Well, I, I'm uh, not sure what happened there. But, it was uh, just, I, I think, obviously, it's a build-up of Corey Anderson getting written off, written off, and obviously Johnny Walker's uh, the man of the moment in there. Yeah. And well, it's Corey Anderson went out and done what a lot of people didn't think he would do. Yeah. Um, and put on a great performance. The only problem I've got with that division is 
Yep, Johnny Walker's a really good fighter, and so is Cody Anderson. But I just I don't see any of them getting anywhere near John Jones. That division's not that great. There's Jones, and then the rest is, is pretty poor, to be fair. Um, all the athletes at that weight are away doing other sports. That's, the, that's the problem. Um, there's going to put Jones with that Reyes next, and he's going to smoke him. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it's there's nobody. Um, Jones would have done Johnny Walker just the same. Mm. Johnny Johnny Walker was getting a fair bit of hype, and it, it wasn't really deserved hype. He, was, he, he starts a couple of guys quick, but there's, there's big gaps in that dude's game. Um, Aye. Anderson's pretty solid again, but the, the the golfing class between everybody and Jones in that division's massive. The problem with Aya is when the division's a bit light, but the guy at the top it is so. And we've seen guy we've obviously seen a wave of guys coming up. We've, we've obviously got Brazil round the corner, so we can jump on that. We've obviously had Rockhold coming up, didn't go well at all. No. Weidman's come up, didn't go well. Two guys that I, I don't know if I don't think we'll see Rockhold fight again. We might, but uh, that 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 defeat he had the last time was a really bad one. Obviously, he fought uh, Jan Blackwood, who yeah. now welcomes Jacare Souza up a division. Yeah. Um, what do you think about that fight? Yeah, I don't think Jack will do too well, to be honest. He's an older guy. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's that jump, it's that 20 pound jump. Eh? It's a lot it's of power. Diff- it's well. different for going for featherweight to lightweight or something. Um, mm-hmm. And and he, he didn't look great against Jack Hermanson either, mm-hmm. to be fair. And I, I think he'll struggle. Um, the, the good thing is it's in Brazil, which might raise his game a wee bit. Um, if he can get the fight to the ground, he's not that fast, am I? Um, if he can get the fight to the ground, it'll be interesting because his, his grappling's Aye. is probably the best jiu-jitsu guy in the division. Um, but I, I think he'll struggle. Aye, I think he's the he problem. His face jabbed off. Well, the problem is, I to get into the grappling, he needs to get in there, and, and he's going to get be taking hits off a guy who hits a lot harder than and he's used to. Aye, a lot harder than he's used to. Um, and I would imagine Jan Blackwoods is probably a guy that's got should be fighting for the title I think maybe Reyes Blackowitz and then to be see Jones that him out and going to heavyweight up. I just don't Aye. see what else there is for him at light heavyweight nah, he's, he's, he's run that one and then obviously the other one the uh, Scottish interest on the card is obviously Paul Degg massive opportunity at late notice to get in there against Shogun who is a legend and a lot of folk might look at Shogun and think he's aging but he's been doing really well recently yep. so that is a that is a tough night uh, it, is aye. it is a hard fight it is aye. I think uh, he'll have to come through adversity I think mm-hmm. if he's going to win um, but he's he's capable of it and he's yep. his jiu jitsu is very good man um, if Shogun underestimates yeah. him and stuff like that, he could he could be in trouble. Mm-hmm. The key there is going to be if Paul can get the fight in the ground. It sounds dead simple, like 1994, mm-hmm. can you get it in the ground? But if he can he get him on the ground, he's, the, the power difference in their striking is, is going to be very big. Yeah. Um, and, and Shogun's wrestling's looked pretty good in the last the last wee while, actually. As he started to slow down and, and be less an athlete, he's, you can see there's, his technical takedown defence is actually pretty good. But he's, it's just that experience as well, just the experience you've been in the cages. Yeah. I, I know a lot of the guys like to say this in the gym, a crafty old veteran, and he certainly is that. He's, uh, I remember him feel like his pride running stuff. Mm. He was my, he was like my favourite fighter back then. Aye. Um, and then when you seen him getting, was it, who was it that knocked him out? It was Joe, Ant, Anthony Smith knocked aye. him out, and you're like, oh, I do like watching this. But then he's he's won four out of his last five, eh? so he's doing something right, but. Mm-hmm. The Tyson Pedro one and that was he wasn't expected to win that, but no, uh, it'll be interesting. It's, it's, it's good for Paul to get a name like that, eh? and mm-hmm. it, it, he, he can definitely win it. Um, I don't know, I don't know what his game plan will be. I don't know if he wants to go to wrestling too early with it and, uh. and stuff like that, but you, you you wouldn't be surprised if he subbed him. Eh? It's, no. it's not a shock if he subs somebody. It's just one of the ones, I guess, is the comparisons to the opportunity Stevie got. It's a it's a massive opportunity for Paul. It's obviously, I mean, you can look at guys, if you look at the top 10 of the light heavyweight decision, you would take Shogun or most of the guys in there as well, just Aye. on name record. A Shogun win does a lot more for you. I think he's ranked 14 or something, mm-hmm. Shogun, I'm not sure. Um, 14 or 15, but everybody wants to fight their names, eh? and there's mm-hmm. no bigger name in that division than him. Like, no. he, he was the guy that John Jones won the belt off. Yep. He's been the Pride champion. He was the Grand Prix champion at Pride. His record's frightening. Um, he, he used to be like, he, he used to be John Jones at one point. He yeah. was 24, 25 and everybody was watching him. And he was, he was 
he was like changed the game a wee bit. It's like this new high progressive style. <clears throat> He's rolling for knee bars and all that back in the day and and, and stuff like that. So everybody and everybody who fights wants fights like that. Like Aye. like Paul will want that 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 type of level of opposition to test his so. And if he wins, then he then he, he gets that name on his list the same way Stevie's got their names on his list. But mm-hmm. that that's the biggest name any Scottish guys fought. Like he's Aye. he's a way on a level above any of the other guys that the Scottish guys have fought. Like he's he's won. He's been a champion at every place he's went. Eh? Right, and he has. He's, he's a legend, and obviously the stories he shoot the box style uh, out of Brazil, him and Fandley and all that mm-hmm. is. Uh, Again, it's it's just a massive opportunity for Paul, and just hopefully, it does wonders. No, it does wonders for Paul's career, and obviously, it hits squad Jim, and it it's good for Scottish MMA if Paul can go out to Brazil and get a win. I will put eyes on him. I think with him being a jiu jitsu guy, I like the opportunity of being in Brazil as well. Like when mm-hmm. we were there, it was it was cool because you're like, this is where everyone started, kind of. Aye. Um, I mean, we were training and stuff, and he'll, he'll soak all that in. I, um, It'll be interesting to see it on, on Saturday night, but... Aye, and I think as well, I think Paul's the kind of, the kind of guy that will quite enjoy, because he's obviously going to hear a lot of Brazilian fans uh, letting him know that he's going to die. Aye, uh, he's the, definitely got not going to have any fans in that. He's, aye, that crowd's going to be way showgun, and I think... Have that chant and all that shit, but he'll, <laughs> he'll, he'll not, that'll not phase him. No, I don't. I don't think so. It's a, it's another great opportunity. Uh, I mean, there's no a massive amount more to talk about the card. Obviously, there's a few other good fights, but uh, look at a lot of cards at the moment. There's there's, there's so many of them coming around. There, there's kind of you've got one or two big fights on them. Then it's poor. Eh? Nah, it's just, it's just, just obviously the way it is, you know. Uh, and even up in Scotland, we're we're still dying for a for a big show. Hopefully, the UFC will come back here at some point and. They have, a, they, have a, they have provisionally booked a hydro for next year. I think it's July 17th or so. It's July anyway. Aye. Um, I know that's booked. And they were saying to us when we were in Singapore as well, the, the social media guys were saying it's booked. Um, but I, I think they'd actually provisionally booked it mm-hmm. previously, maybe 2018, and then changed the booking for whatever reason. But um, it is provisionally booked for next year. Is that another thing as well? With obviously Stevie's big win, if Paul can uh, pull out the bag and get a big win, do you think with them booking Glasgow, do you see the UFC maybe looking about and, and picking up a couple more Scottish guys? I think so, man. I think uh, obviously Ross Houston should be prime position for it. Um, but it, may, it makes sense for them just to bring a new guy in when they go to these new places, Aye. Um, just for local interest and stuff. But the Scottish guys are, are, are all doing pretty well they now, like mm-hmm. like Joanne's just had another win and then yeah. she can't be far off the title. Um if Paul beats Shogun then it's fucking it opens everything up for him and then Stevie's just come off a big win as well. So So there's uh, definitely opportunities there for the guys and obviously with regards to Ross signing for UFC, there's a bit of politics behind the scenes there, isn't there? It's a bit we'll hopefully have Ross on at some point to talk about it, but yeah, uh, it seems like he's getting the uh, Getting the short end of the stick at the moment uh, at Cage the, Warriors. That's the business side of the game, unfortunately. It's always been like that. Eh? Um, you, need to, you need to know what you're signing. Um, you need to know who you're dealing with. You need people with your best interests at heart. Um, you'll not be the first fighter that's been screwed over by promoters and stuff, Aye. man. But it's, it's not good, man. It's not good. <clears throat> Uh, it's, I guess that's where it comes into play but sometimes you need a good manager or you need a, a head coach who's been through that sort of system as well yeah you need somebody you need somebody who's been about and, and knows the, the kind of ins and outs stuff that's why most of our guys are, are not managed now anymore eh? mm. um, you don't need it like yeah. when, when the Reebok sponsorship thing came in it changed the, the, the management stuff changed completely they can only do so much for you now Right. Um, if you've got a, com- a computer and a printer, Nimi does all your contract stuff and whatever else. Then that needs done, he, he deals with it for us. Um, so it's it, it sounds nice. These guys, we we just had Alex fighting in Germany there, and his records right. now eleven and one. And before he even got back to the hotel, he had three or four managers up approaching him mm-hmm. about signing, and they blow so much smoke up your arse. It's unbelievable. And have you sort of heard a word with Alex and tell him what your thought on that is? He he runs everything past me anyway. Uh-huh. Um, he he's in a he's in a position now where he could sign for the UFC tomorrow. He's eleven and one. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, he's just came off a massive one, but I, I I try and guide him as much as possible. Whether yeah. if somebody comes along and and maybe can can sort him, then then that's a different matter. But uh, you need to you need to 
you need to be careful. We, we've we've had a couple of guys. Like even Stevie was duped before with one guy claimed to manage Chris Eubank Junior and, and said all this other stuff, and it turned out the guy was just a mad liar. Eh? But but time by time Stevie had clocked on it. He'd, he'd signed a contract, and the guy was wanting fifteen percent of all his earnings, and we managed to get get it all sorted. But um, some of these guys are some, some fighters only really clued up business wise. Mm-hmm. A lot of them they, they they know how to fight and. These guys say the right words and promise the right things and whisper shit in their ears when Aye. going over the coach's head sometimes and, and uh, if if you tell them the right stuff sometimes a lot of them will sign for you. It's pretty well known over the years that there's a lot of fucking dodgy managers in S- combat, combat sports in general. No, the majority of them are scumbags. They are, they're, they're in it to make money out of guys who are... They do nothing. Uh, they're mm-hmm. not getting in there and, and putting everyone on the line. The, the majority... And, and promoters can be the same as well, mm. to be honest. Aye, at the end of the day when it all boils down it's a business it's a money business Aye. and if people think they can make a bit of money out of you there's a lot of people that will certainly do that take everyone off you I mean, right. you just need to look at boxing and see the, Aye. Aye. very few people come out of that way with any money or, or their brain intact no. um, other than the managers and the promoters oh this is it and obviously Alex's fight itself I've not seen the full fight I've seen the finish leading up to it looked like he landed a beautiful knee um, I think he'd threw that knee a few times before yeah. and did it land a couple of times before? It was close to it a couple of times. He'd, he'd done some good work in the other round, setting stuff up. Mm-hmm. Um, he used the, cat, the low calf kick quite a bit to demobilise the guy. Um, and he pressured him and he faked a lot. He, he changed the, his style up a good bit. When he's, when he's been here, his emphasis in the seven weeks he was here was on his footwork. Mm-hmm. And that's the best it's looked. Um, he's still predominantly a grappler, Alex. He's, he's yeah. a jiu-jitsu black belt with, with a good top game. Um and that, the other guy was actually the tie boxer, but the, the finish was beautiful. Um, and I was that <coughs> happy for him, man, because no. he, he's here for seven weeks and there was times when he, like he's in here at night on his own. Mm-hmm. Uh, the boys for the gym all looked after him. We're taking him into Edinburgh and I had him at Celtic Lazio game and, and stuff like that. But he put he put his life on hold for those seven weeks and came here and he put so much trust in us. Aye. Um like I get, I was getting nervous. I was like, "Shit, if this kid doesn't win," um, and it just everything just came together for him perfectly. So it was, it was good. I think coming to, I think coming to Scotland, living here yourself, sleeping in a gym. Obviously, you've got dorms, which is great. Yeah, that shows the level of dedication he's got to the to the sport. Yeah, he could have went anywhere as well. He's somewhere to mm. look. He went. He tried a bunch of places. Uh, he'd been, mm. he'd been to three or four different places, uh, and he, he he came back and chose here, which was cool. But Aye. Um, it was it was total commitment for the guy, yeah. Like, uh, it's, and, it's what's, it needs to be done sometimes. And it, sh- it, it shows if you put that level of commitment in it and you've got the talent. Uh, it's the work ethic, yeah. Uh, the work ethic mixed with talent. Um, obviously, it shows. And yeah. it, it, everything went well for him that night, and it was a beautiful finish. Aye, it was good, man, because he, he barely went around when he was here for seven weeks. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, oh shit, but. <laughs> um, I, he'd, he'd done everything that was was asked him and everything came together perfect for him and he had a couple of wee uh, setbacks on his plane was delayed on the Thursday flying to the way in and then yeah. uh, when he when he eventually got there he had like a three and a half hour drive to the hotel and so bits and pieces like that that you, you can't you let that affect you because it's out of your control but um, he's, it's good when you see guys getting what they deserve do you know what mm-hmm. I mean like sometimes like we we go back to Stephen earlier. Like, he, he, Stephen didn't deserve to win, but he didn't deserve to get knocked out Aye. like that. It's just the risk of the game. Um, but Alex is like the, the guy he was fighting wouldn't have put in the same commitment that he Aye. put in. Like he wouldn't have shut shut everything, shut up shop, and moved to another country for seven weeks. And I think Alex had said as well. He learnt pretty early that he couldn't get a, he couldn't get away with being a slow starter in here because I think when he sparred with Stevie Ray he took it a wee bit easy to start with and get head kicked aye, aye. And when he first came over two years ago uh, Danny broke his nose the first, the first, <laughs> why did he come back the first day oh, um, and I had to take him with, I had to take him to hospital all the time to, at first they were going to reset it but then he was like just wait till after the fight and reset it and we actually had the doctor and that at the gym try to reset his nose doing that thing Mm. and it wasn't for budget it was disgusting um, and 
Oh, he was worried about was his cardio. He's like, I can't even breathe, my cardio's going to be bad. But, um, <laughs> you must feel a bit bad yourself. Look, welcome the guy into the gym, right? Here's Danny like, breaking your nose. Aye, his nose was away earlier. We're like, oh, fuck. And I was like, Danny doesn't really do that to people. Right. Um, but I, it shows you it, sh- it shows you how Alex's mentality is when he's like, I'm going back there. Right. Um, and he, he came back with the same, man. he just wanted to learn it. Um, and he's, he's on like a seven or eight fight winning streak now so he, he never came back with any ego or anything like he uh, never came in and he was like I'm 10 and 1 and I'm black belt in jiu so he came in um, and he was like I'll clean the mats and I was like no there's a cleaning company that comes in just you train eat rest um, and then he'd come in some days and he'd, he's doing helping the kids right. uh, showing them stuff and he was just a, he's just a good guy man and when Going back to what I was saying earlier, when when guys get what they deserve, sometimes it's it's, it's really nice to see. Is it good for the guys in the gym as well? So you, even just your amateur guys, not come in and they can look at a guy like Alex and see the sort of levels of, of commitment he's putting into the sport. Aye, and then it's just another good training partner. There's so yeah. many guys about that weight here, like uh, seventy to seventy-seven kilos. Um, it's just another super experienced guy. Like so sometimes you get in there. And, there's this, there'll be Stevie who's had 35 fights then there's Alex who had his 11 Stevie Mops had his Graham Turner's had 35 uh, Danny's in Martin Delaney's popping in do you know what I mean like you're just right. like fuck that that's 200 fights between those 6 or 7 dudes it's so much experience and knowledge uh, to, sh- to share to these the younger guys um, so it, it's just an, you, we've had guys in before and and it, it's just all about them but he was like he was part of the team when he was here right. um, which was cool it's good then that, uh, that it's obviously paid off from he's got a big win and hopefully could be on to bigger things in the near future I think if the UFC go to Germany it could be a shout out they've got a couple mm-hmm. Serbian fighters there Aye. Um, or if, maybe if they go to Croatia as well um, but he's in a good position there with that record 11-1 is an impressive record that weight mm-hmm. um, and that, the last guy was a good fighter Aye, winning big shows helps when you've got good shows in your record as well. Yep. yep. Well, it's been good to good to get you back on the show uh, and catching up with what's been happening recently. So, uh, I think we'll we'll end on that one. Cool man. Right, cheers. Thanks. Right.